Hello and welcome to another episode of DAX in 10. In this episode, I'm going to be taking a look at variables and formatting and how you can use them to help you with debugging DAX code. So if you're following along with the book that accompanies this series, then in this episode, I'm going to be delving into chapter two, which looks at variables and formatting. Now, I've already taken a look at variables and formatting in a previous episode of this series, and you can check that out now by clicking on the pop out banner at the top there. However, in this episode, I'm going to take things a step further by taking a look at how you can use variables and formatting as a way of helping you to debug any errors that you may be having in your DAX code. OK, so let's start by moving over to my computer where I've got Power BI open with a sample report. Uh, for this demo, I'm using the Katoso sales sample for Power BI desktop report. and I'll leave a link to where you can download this from in the notes for this episode below. It's slightly different to the report to the one I've used in the book, but the code examples I'm going to be using here are the same. Now, quite a lot of the time when you're writing DAX code, you're going to find that it doesn't work the way as it should, whether that's due to an error that's producing or whether it's because it doesn't give you the correct answer that you're expecting. If you've used other programming languages or development environments, then you're probably used to having the ability to go through and debug your code line by line as it runs. However, DAX doesn't work like that. It's a functional language, and it's more like using uh, functions in Excel than it is programming with a language like Python, for example. In this episode, I'm going to take you through a couple of techniques that you can use to help you with debugging your code, and that's the use of good formatting and the use of variables. Now, for a measure that consists of a couple of functions, good formatting isn't necessarily an issue. However, DAX code can get very complicated very quickly, and unless you format your code in some way, you're soon going to find yourself running into problems. However, by sticking to some basic formatting rules, you'll make your code both easier to read and with it easier to follow through with what it's doing. If you're using lots of nested functions, for example, it'll make it a lot easier to keep track of all those opening and closing parentheses. So let's start with an example measure, and in this case, it's a measure that's designed to be used with a card visual to display a dynamic report title based on the values that are selected with a slicer. So here we should have the words manufactured by, and then if you select one uh, manufacturer in the slicer, it should just give you that manufacturer's name. If you select multiple uh, manufacturers, then they should all be listed with uh, a comma separated, and then the last two uh, values should be separated with the words and. And if you select all uh, manufacturers in that slicer, it then should come back and say manufactured by all manufacturers. However, as you can see at the moment, the uh, the measure isn't working correctly. Uh, my card visual here is, is not uh, showing the values that I've selected on the slicer. So if I go over to the slicer and uh, select multiple values now, if I go through, well, I'll go through one by one and select them, you can see quite clearly that the card visual isn't updating as I expect it to. So if we go over to the measure and take a look at it, you can see here I've got just some uh, straightforward unformatted DAX code. So the first thing I really need to do here is to go through and format this code. So I'm going to select it and then copy it with Control C. And then I'm going to go over to a site called daxformatter.com where I can paste in a copy of my code and with a click of a format button, it should be transformed into some nicely formatted code. So let's paste in the code I've just copied uh, with Control V and then the click on the format button and you can see it's now uh, formatted nicely and that's uh, formatted following some standard rules that are shown on this site. Uh, copy that with the copy button, head back to my Power BI report. So I can now paste in the newly formatted DAX code into the DAX editor for my measure. Uh, and that's a, that's a great start, it makes the code much easier to read now but it doesn't actually uh, fix the issue we're having. So if I go back and have a look on our report here, uh, I can go through and select some manufacturers on the slicer, and I can see it isn't actually updating the card visual. So let's go back to our uh, our measure, and the next step in isolating the cause of the problem is to go through and convert the DAX code so that it uses variables. So I'm going to go through here and uh, find the first candidate for our first variable. And if you look through the code here, you can see that I'm using uh, a function which is values product manufacturer and I, I'm using that in several places and what that does is uh, gives me it's a table function that returns uh, the values of the manufacturers that I'm selecting in my slicer so let's go up here and uh, create the first variable and I'm going to call that uh, selected manufacturers and 
So selected uh, manufacturers. And then I'm going to go down and I'm just going to copy and paste that uh, that function there, values product manager. So we copy that and go up here and paste it in. And that creates my first variable. Okay, so I'm just going to indent that to keep the formatting uh, consistent. Okay, so the next variable I'm going to create, uh, we go through and look at that. We've got one here uh, that uses the count rows of values and all that's doing is actually just giving me a number uh, that corresponds to the number of selected manufacturers in that slicer so let's create a second variable and we're going to call that uh, number of uh, of selected manufacturers and again I'm just going to copy and paste that uh, tax function in so let's uh, go in there and copy that and then paste that up here again indenting and in fact actually that values product manufacturer that was what we used for our first variable so I'm going to just go in and change that function there to use a variable instead so we can put selected manufacturers in there okay so uh, I'm just going to go through now and create the remaining uh, variables Okay, so I've now created all of the variables. The next step I need to do is create the return part of our DAX uh, measure. So I need to, what I need to do now is in this uh, second part of the DAX code is to go through and replace all of the existing expressions uh, which with the variables that I've created. Okay, so we've now finished the work in terms of reformatting uh, the DAX code for our measure and converting it to use variables uh, and again this in itself isn't going to actually fix the error that we've got to, with the measure but what it does do is it puts us in a, uh, uh, in a position where we can start to use these variables uh, to debug the code. So the next step in debugging our code is to take a copy of our variable definitions and then I'm going to use those to define uh, a new test measure so we create a new measure and we're going to call that uh, selected manufacturers test so manufacturers test uh, and into that I'm going to paste in our variable definitions I'll, I'll just re remove this line here because we don't need that and then what this enables us to then do is to go through each of the variables uh, one by one. We can use that in the return part of the DAX uh, expression. So we'll start off with uh, the, the first one selected manufacturers obviously is a, a table value but we then got number of selected manufacturers so this is we, what we really need for this is a single value. So I'm going to use that variable first of all and I'm going to create our measure with that. So we'll start off by creating the measure and I'm going to drag that onto the card visual and what's that now showing me is the number of selected manufacturers that I've got on the slicer so if I go through and select you know all of the the manufacturers on there I can see it's uh, picking up 10 values as I would expect okay so we know that uh, variable is working fine so now let's go on to the number of possible manufacturers we'll put that variable into the repair, uh, return part of our tax statement and we'll try that and again that's uh, automatically updating the card visual now and we can see that's correctly showing us 10 because we've got 10 manufacturers on the slicer okay so now I'm going to do the next variable that's all but last selected manufacturers so I really should expect that to be one less than the number of uh, selected values that I've got on the slicer so if I select one I actually know so that's returning the actual value so what I actually need to do I need a single value there so let's wrap that variable with a count rows statement a uh, uh, function so put the count rows function there and that should then convert that back to a number so what I should be seeing now on the card visual is one less than the number of values that I'm selecting on the slicer and in actual fact I can see there that that's not it's actually it's it's given me the number of uh, selected values which is wrong I, I want it to be one less so
Uh, this gives us a clue to where our error might lie, so let's change that uh, part of the code to minus one. And see that, and now that's updating correctly. Okay, so that's as I would expect it to be, which is great. So that may indeed be where our problem lies, so we go through there and just double check that. Yep, that's all working as it should be. So, uh, we better, better just go through though and uh, test that last variable. So, if I go in here uh, and put into the return statement uh, last selected manufacturer, and that variable should just return a one because I just want it when I when I go through and select on my slicer I want to tell it to tell me uh, which is the last selected manufacturer so um, okay so that works okay so let's go back to our uh, let's go back to our measure and change that to minus one in there and uh, drag that measure across to the card visual and we can now see it's working so that's great so as I go through and select one just says manufactured by uh, a datum corporation as I go through it it just selects the one I'm selecting if I select several though it will go through and uh, it will tell me manufactured by uh, give me a list but then I also get for the last one it says and and then if I select all of them, it just says selected, uh, manufactured by all manufacturers. So that's all working exactly as it should. Now, although this method of debugging may be more complex than you're used to if you're using other programming languages, it still provides you with a practical way to be able to inspect and fix errors in your DAX code. Uh, hopefully you can see by following some good formatting rules and using something like daxformatter.com uh, to format your DAX code, uh, that will make it much easier to read and work with. And then by using variables, uh, that will allow you to break down your code into smaller parts. And you can then use that to debug uh, your code and see how it's working, especially in relation to interactions with filters, slices, and other visuals you may have on your report. Well, that's it for this episode of DAX in 10. If you enjoyed it, then please let me know by liking it with a big thumbs up. If you're new to the channel and you haven't done so already, then please hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click on the bell icon to set your notifications so that you'll be notified when I upload new content to the channel. But that's it for now. As always, thank you so much for watching. And wherever you are, stay safe, keep well. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode of Dax in 10.